Might be hard to believe, but June 5th marks the 30th anniversary of the disease we now call AIDS. That's the date the first medical journals reported an unusual medical condition that had been noticed in five gay men in Los Angeles. CBS 5's Hank Plant was one of the first journalists in the country to report on this new disease. In fact, this station was awarded two national Emmys and the prestigious George Foster Peabody Award for our early coverage of the epidemic. This week, Hank returns to CBS 5 for a series of reports on AIDS at 30 years. It is hard to believe, isn't it? 30 yeah. years. And Dana and Ellen, this week we will look back at those early years of AIDS. We'll also look at where treatment stands today, and we'll take another look at the man who appears to be the first person in world history to actually have been cured of the disease. But first, let's remember those early days. <laughs> Nineteen eighty one in San Francisco and the great gay and lesbian party of liberation was in full swing and ground zero of the party was the city's Castro district. It's a day to let people know that people aren't afraid to be gay. But as the party rolled on there was an unknown guest moving in as silently as the fog there was a virus. It was June 5th of 1981 that the Centers for Disease Control issued a report carried only in the L.A. Times about a strange outbreak of pneumonia among five gay men in Los Angeles. Well, this is okay for right Cases were already cropping up in San Francisco. What did the spots look like? Gay activist Cleve Jones started a hotline on Castro Street to deal with all the rumors and fear flooding the community. Very few of these buildings have actually changed. Today, 30 years later, after starting the AIDS quilt, Jones is still an activist. What's it like for you to be back here 30 <laughs> years later? Well, it's weird. Um, I mean, I'm grateful to be alive. Uh, one of the things I was thinking about this morning was just how young we all were. You know, those of us who were responding were very, very young, and we were also, I think, you know, even before the test became available, we were all very aware that we almost certainly were ourselves infected too. Did that turn out to be true for oh, you? Yeah, yeah. But uh, the street uh, still has a lot of ghosts. <laughs> it was a frightening time for everyone. How scary was it 30 years ago? It was terrifying. It was absolutely terrifying and you know, people forget today that we had to go for several years before we understood what caused it and how it was transmitted. It was a full year after those first cases before any network newscasts picked up on the story. AIDS, the acquired immune deficiency syndrome. The disease known as AIDS. Disease AIDS. Doctors, activists, patients all sprang into action to deal with the strange new disease, forming what became known as the San Francisco model. That model was emulated all over the country. In fact, there was a time when Mayor Dianne Feinstein's AIDS budget for the city of San Francisco was bigger than President Reagan's AIDS budget was for the entire nation. Any visual problems? Among those who took on the new epidemic was a young doctor at San Francisco General named Paul Volverding, who would become one of the world's leading physicians treating the disease. How scary was it back then? Uh, really scary. Um, and I don't remember myself as having any particular courage. But, you know, we took care of the patients. They needed our help. They obviously needed our help. Um, but I remember nightmares, recurring nightmares of having infected my kids. That, that to me was the thing that woke me up at night. Because people didn't know how it was communicated. Absolutely not. All of us in the early epidemic, you know, at first there were no such things as body fluid precautions, you know, so we were examining people and drawing blood and doing all the procedures without even wearing gloves. The first effective drug was AZT. It came in a case that beeped every four hours when it was time to take a pill. The AZT beep became a mantra all over the Bay Area. You could hear the beep everywhere, from the streets to the cable cars. You get a chance. But much of the public got jolted into caring when AIDS started hitting the famous. At first, Rock Hudson's publicist denied the rumors. He was in here for fatigue. We've had a report that he was in and out of a coma. Can you confirm or deny that? Uh, I can deny that. Then came Hudson's admission, which was read by his friend Burt Lancaster. I am not happy that I am sick. I'm not happy that I have AIDS. 
Over the years, the public watched violent acts. The Ray family burned out of its Florida home after three hemophiliac children got AIDS. The public saw the courage of Indiana's Ryan White, who won the first battle for kids with AIDS to attend public school. What do you think, Ryan? Ready for it? Yes, I do. And then there was Magic Johnson. You don't have to feel sorry for me because if I die tomorrow, I've had the greatest life that anybody can ever. After his announcement that he had the virus, the testing center saw a tenfold increase in patients. Stand up, stand up. There has been a lot of anger over AIDS in three decades, particularly over the federal government's slow response to the epidemic in the beginning. That anger proved effective in getting research and money moving more quickly, but not quickly enough to save so many who lost the battle. How many of them would have gone on to hold office and accomplish great political work? How many great dances weren't choreographed? How many incredible works of art weren't painted? How many films weren't shot? How many books weren't written? I try not to dwell on that, but I, I, miss, I still miss my friends terribly. And, Sometimes at night when I'm trying to sleep, if I allow my mind to go there, I, I feel like I'm falling backwards off a cliff sometimes. It's just that so many gone. And so much work yet to do as AIDS enters its fourth decade. Now, worldwide, there are still 33 million people living with HIV. 56,000 Americans still contract the disease every year, and 20% of them don't even know they have it. And we'll report more on that later this week. And then Dana and Alan, tomorrow night, we will bring you more on our exclusive TV interview with the man known as the Berlin patient, mm -hmm. who appears to be the only man in world history to actually be cured wow. of the disease. I'm so glad we're taking a look at this. But I have to ask you, Hank, you know, it's our job to maintain some distance from every story. But you, here you were, a gay man in San Francisco. You had watched friends die, right. didn't know what it was. How were you able to cover the story? You know, it, it was more than a story to me because these were my friends who were being lost early on and, and getting sick. Uh, and so uh, I think that uh, it was kind of a double-edged sword being mm -hmm. a reporter. I mean, it was very sad covering the story, but at the same time, I could use my position here uh, at the station. Uh, to uh, to tell the truth about the story, to get the word out, especially when the government, the federal government, was silent for so long on this. And also, I want to give credit to the station. I was lucky to be working at this station, uh, which believed in public service mm -hmm. and uh, found that this was a, a, a very compelling story, and we just did these stories every night. Committed resources to it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. We look forward to the rest of the week. Absolutely. Glad yeah. to have you back. See you tomorrow. Okay, Hank. Thank you.